Behold, now is the acceptable time, now is the day of salvation. Return to the Lord your God, for God is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Return to the Lord your God, that the light of God's face may shine on us. May your justice, Lord, shine like the sun, and may it shine through us. God's mercy, grace, and peace be with you. Let us pray. As tender as parent to child, O God, so gentle are you to the poor. As high as heaven is above earth, so vast is your love for the world. As far as east is from the west, so far you remove our sin. Remember how we are made, O God. Remember that we are dust. Heal our lives. Renew our strength and crown us with your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Savior. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. O God of all creation, in your boundless mercy, you bind us to Christ Jesus, in whom you are made known and whom we are forgiven, through whom we bless and serve you with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, before uh, we hear the scripture readings from Susie, I wanted to share a little bit. Um, Our theme is return to the Lord and and what might that look like or what can this look like? So last week I shared about how Michael Ann had texted and she wanted to um, encourage her church in Colorado to uh, observe Lent this year, which they normally don't. And so, and then I shared uh, her, her view of Lent and what she was trying to do this Lent. This week, uh, I want to share with you, I went to the dentist and the conversation I had with my hygienist. You know how that is, you're laying in the chair and, and your mouth is open as wide as you can make it and they're poking around in there and then they want to talk to you. Um, Well, this was a most unusual conversation. She said that uh, she was being led to share this with me, and would that be all right? And so she proceeded to tell me about how her sister, um, I think she was 16 or 17, and her sister was 19, and she was killed in a car accident. And so she went into great detail about that night and and, and the uh, anxiety that she was feeling, and, and she said she was mad at God for 40 years and five months from that that time on. And then uh, through a series of of connections and a dream she had, I'm sorry, I don't remember what the dream was about, but she had this dream where she felt like God was speaking to her. And there were these connections, like a friend of hers knew somebody that knew her sister back then, and somebody else knew somebody, and she didn't know any of this, but all of this came to light all about the same time again after 40 years and about five months. And so, um, again, somebody that she knew today and in current times had had a friend that knew her sister back then. And then another friend said that she knew somebody that had talked to her sister on the day that she had died. And it turned out to be somebody that worked for Weyerhaeuser and, and she was going to start a job and she had just come from that that interview with this woman and, and the woman was so shook up when she found out that, that um, her sister had died that when they had a child, they named this child after her sister. So all these connections and this dream together and she was really feeling called. She ordered a Bible. She hadn't really been a churchgoer since then. She ordered a Bible and, and she really felt called to share her story. So I wasn't the first and only one. It sounds like she's been doing this quite a bit. So return to the Lord and what does that mean? And I think for me and in this case, it was her expressing the ability to forgive the driver of the other vehicle in the accident that killed her sister. And it was also her current desire and commitment to be of use to God and wanting to and willing to share her story and, and listening for when God was leading her to that opportunity. So again, return to the Lord is our theme for Lent and what for you might that look like in your life? And I invite you to think about that as we hear our scripture readings. These will be the readings for Sunday as well, but um, the 10 commandments in Exodus and Jesus clearing the temple in John. So Susie? The first reading is from Exodus 20, beginning with the first verse. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath 
or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall do no work, neither you, you nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male or female servant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The gospel reading is from John 2 beginning at the 13th verse. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple courts, both the sheep and cattle, he scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, Get these out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. His disciples remembered that it is written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then responded to him, What sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and I will raise it again in three days. They replied, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you are going to raise it in three days? But the temple he had spoken of was his body, and after he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. Then they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken, the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Oh God, may our desire be to return to you, because we have come to know that in you we have life and have it abundantly. We pray, accomplish in us the work of your salvation, that we may reflect your light in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Savior, bring us with all creation to the joy of his resurrection. Amen.
gathered as one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Merciful God, continue to be with us on our journey through these 40 days of Lent. Renew us in the gift of our baptism that we may provide for those who are poor. Pray for those in need. Fast from self-indulgence and above all that we may find our treasure in the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may go in God's peace. Thanks be to God.